Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another video of ours. This is JP Fahi. I'm Fabrizio Fitzsimons. The <laughs> Shells podcast will know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, lads. Uh, interesting week ahead or gone, JP. Wasn't it in the Eritrea League Premier Division as usual? And uh, I suppose, first of all, before we get into Drotton in Shelburne, the two Wilson brothers sent off which is just incredible. I'm not sure if that's ever on the same week, the same night, if that ever's happened before. I was trying to look and do um, research. I think um, it was one was playing for Bowes and one was playing for Shelburne. I think may, they may have scored on the same night. They got sent off the same night. I'm not 100%. But there, there was, was something, dead. but I don't think it was a send -off. I think it was scoring. I think it might yeah. have been scoring. If anyone can let us know in the comments, by the way, please do. If we're wrong, let us know. But I think it might have been scoring, JP. But uh, I just look, it was a bit of a chuckle, to be fair. I'm sure um, you can imagine then <laughs> the family that night as well, ringing up each other like, how'd you go? Well, I got sent off. I also got sent off. But neither of them lost, I suppose. And one of them scored. And we'll get into that. It obviously finished Trotter the United 1, Shelburne 1 at Weaver's Park. We bought them against top. Uh, two sendings off, late sendings off for Shelburne, Paddy Barrett and Tyreek Wilson, as mentioned there. Uh, Tyreek Wilson had given the sh uh, Shells the lead. And, you know, the smallest man on the pitch, I think it was about eight yards out, sent her goal and marked heads home to give them the lead. I don't think Kevin Doherty would have been too impressed with conceding that way, to be, to say the least, JP. Uh, I'm impressed anyway. Oh, honestly, like, you know, look, you have to give Tyreek Wilson credit there for scoring it, but at the same time, uh, the equaliser then came from the penalty spot. Before that, though, Paddy, Paddy Barish got sent off for a second yellow. Um, his first yellow was a few minutes before. I think it was a foul, JP, but is it a little bit harsh for you? For me, I thought it was a little bit harsh to give the yellow, I think. Um, I could kind of see how it was given, but I think there was enough for the referee to kind of go... You know, one more foul and you're in trouble here, son. Yes, but I can also see why the referee has given it. Um, I think he, the referee has seen it from a point of view that Taylor has gone past him. Um, Jahad are on, on the attack. Um, and Barrett has prevented Taylor from getting into a, a good position. Um, I can see it from my point of view. I can see it from your point of view as well. Mm. Um, but look, when you're on a yellow card, the last thing you do is you give the referee a, a, a decision to make, and Paddy Bart has has done that. Um, Ty, uh, Tyreek Wilson, um, had a, a really scored a really good goal. Um, great corner, great header, smallest man in the pitch, I think. Um, and then he ultimately causes the equaliser end for for Drogheda. Mm. Um, definite handball. Um, Just suggests that a very needless handball as well. <laughs> Possibly, but look, mm. you, you can't you can't sort of put it. The ball's coming across, and he stuck his hand out. Like it, mm. sometimes it's natural instinct when someone comes near your body, you just throw a hand at it, and I think that's what it is. Because when you look at his reaction, he immediately just puts his head in the ground. Mm. Um, and Paul McLaughlin, I don't know whether he consulted with his linesman through the the earpiece of whether they they go for a caution or not, or whether he just took his time and. Then decided to give it, um, but I think that was a deserved yellow card. Um, I don't think there can be any arguments on that. Um, so yeah, um, I think on them two sending offs, I think one of them was definitely one of them. I think you can see the argument for both. Mm, yeah, it's not like a ridiculous second yellow either with Barrett, but. I was playing a bit devil's advocate with the Wilson one, but do you know what I think what happens, Wilson, there? The ball gets played. I think it's, uh, yeah, it is Young Davis who plays the ball across to Foley. I don't think Wilson anticipates Foley hits the first time his right foot. And there's just a bit of a, almost like a confusion jolt mm. as such there. I think that's what I think what happens. And he just puts his hand out and it's a bit like, oh, you know, that kind of way. He just realizes there. Don't think he's expecting Foley to cross that first time with his weaker right foot. Um, of course, James Taylor converts the penalty, and that's his first goal for Drotted, and it's a brilliant point. But Killian Callis will be <laughs> kicking himself for missing that header oh. right at the end. Obviously, Shelburne are stretched, so you can't really complain then to nine men, like you know what I mean, yeah, um, um, from their point of view. But my he God, actually, he, hasn't even hit, he hasn't even hit Connor Cairns with it, he hasn't hit the poster. I think it's one of those where it looks like it's hard to do what he did. 
he hasn't even put it wide of the target. He's just must the everything completely. Like it, it hasn't even gone for a goal kick. Mm. Um, so it was a really poor miss. Um, one that Johara will be hoping come the end of the season and not be looking back upon and thinking, well, if that had gone in, it, it could have been, it could have been different. But um, Shelburne, given the situation that they were in, um, with with twelve minutes to go, they they be they be disappointed that the situation that they left themselves in. Um, but when they they look back at this, they'll obviously see it as a, a as a good point. Um, especially because of, of results elsewhere. Yeah, I mean there were a couple of debuts in the match as well. Are we uh, starters actually for Drotted as well, which was um, great to see for them. And James Taylor did give them a bit of something up front. And uh, as Shelburne, or Shelburne are concerned, the three signs they made came on as well at some point. Sam Bone, Harry Wood, and and Ali Coote all came on. But um, it's funny because um, at the start of the match, Shelburne fans, I'd say, would have said, "Nah, point, no good here." In their heads, you know what I mean. And Drotted fans probably would have said. You know, would have been surprised if they got a draw, would have taken a draw basically, but they're probably a little bit disappointed in the end that they didn't nick it. And Shelburne, delighted, particularly, we won't get on to, when we get on to there, we'll talk about that, but particularly, let's say, with results elsewhere, because they've obviously gained now um, a point really at, at the top of the table. And, you know, going into Europe, they'll be looking at that. But as it stands, I think, now they still have, there's no fixture with Bowes penciled in yet, their game in hand, but I believe as it stands, Barrett and Wilson will more than likely miss the Derry City match. So um, it's looking like that, the league game against Derry City. There's a cup game as well, though. Might um, miss the game. They may miss the cup game. I- I'm not entirely sure on this. I've, I've tried to do a few background checks. I haven't seen anything conclusive on it, let's say. Yeah. Uh, I'd assume it's... I was thinking it was probably mm. the league game myself, but it's mm. probably the cup game, you know. Mm. Um I don't know what... They'd be situation. hoping it's the cup game, by the way. They, they will be, they will, because that's one thing they won't want to do, is they've begun in the, um, the Derry game, missing two of their first choice back four. Um, because that's... Going, Barris, I think, he's such a that's leader. Probably, that's probably going to be coming off the back of a, a second round game in Europe. Um, mm. Squad's going to be particularly maybe stretched, so they'll, they'll, they'll be wanting all the players, first choice players available as... They they can go into that dairy game. Um, I know they're at home. Um, so look, it would be interesting. We'll we'll probably find out in the next week or so whether they they missed the the cup game against Bray or the dairy game. Yeah, draw the United from their point of view. There, like it's it, in another way. It obviously is a good point. They've taken a point off the leaders and they've gained a point at Dundalk. So there's two points in that now. Notably, we'll talk about that in the prediction show, but they play Dundalk next and in the next two games, by the way, including the cup, one home and one away. So um, it's going to be allowed Derby double, which is always great. And I suppose one of the things that I was thinking of, we don't know exactly who's going to finish bottom or not, but it's highly likely that there's not going to be allowed Derby in the Premier Division for sure next season, which is actually, the thought of that is disappointing, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, well, when you're in the 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 uh, whatever league you're in, you, you want to have a, a derby of such. Um, and, and for Johara and and Dundalk, the only real derby for them is um, one and other. Um, if one goes down, they probably want to drag the other one with them. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, at M and DC Park, finished Galway United one, Bohemians one. Uh, Dale Rooney penalty four minutes. Uh, Rob Slevin equalised five minutes second half and. You know, Bohemians seem to be a top in the first half here. Obviously, you mentioned the Dale Rooney penalty. Conor O'Keefe fells Grant. I don't think there's an issue with that penalty. No problems there. But they had a lot of chance in the first half, Bohemians. Adam, Adam McDonald seemed to get forward actually well in this game. But Dale Rooney plays a wonderful ball over the top. McDonald gets a kind of like a half volley. His touch is brilliant. He gets through... But he'd be disappointed with the finish. I think he should have scored there. Slevin equalises in 50 minutes, which is a typical kind of goal with United uh, goal. Comes from a throw-in. There's a bit of mess in the box, and Slevin finishes to the net. Number of chances in the second half, Galway as well, where Tresca makes a save or two, one particularly from Buckley. But right at the end, um, it's a strange one. Similar to the goal, actually. The throw-in, again, I think it's from Ed McCarthy again, actually. But the referee... The linesman gives a goal, so he's come from the ball, goes over the line. So that's the first thing to clear to clear up there. 
But the sec the other situation was apparently it was a foul on Turetska. I didn't really see a foul from the angle I was at. But I'm guessing, and I could be wrong, I'm guessing that referee is given it maybe for a handball against Patrick Hickey, who is just like that. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to see what maybe he's given it for. I don't see an actual foul on the keeper, though, personally. But no, I've seen, seen a clip of that. And I just, was that the I clip I sent you, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure hmm. why it wasn't given. Um, I just thought maybe the linesman didn't give it, but... Um, now you're telling me the lined man did and the referees overruled him and, and give a foul somewhere else. <sighs> Fouling the keeper? Mm. Not sure. Um, Is there a handball that we can't see, though, I wonder? Are we eclipsed possibly. by a possible handball? Possibly. Mm. Um, has the referee seen something else that, that we haven't seen? You don't mm. know. Um, but look, all will be disappointed with that. Um, they'll be delighted probably to get a point from having gone behind so early. But they they were disappointed that that goal didn't stand for them, um, and and pick up three points because it's um four games now I think without a win, um, yeah fifth and, fifth in the league thirty one points is there still yeah, solid for them but yeah it's one win in the last six mm. four defeats in that time so um as much as we've been singing their praises this year um that they're starting now to. The, those tight games are starting to not be become wins and um look they'll not be sorry I was looking at a, a friendly game there I was including that um sorry it's one win and five and three of those are defeats um but th- they've come to Derry Pats and, and Shelburne at defeat so they'll not be too worried about that um so yeah look. They'll, they'll look to get back to winning ways as, as, as quickly as possible and they'll be hoping the, the new signings can, can hit the ground running for, for them. Um they've they've got goal, they've got Waterford now on Friday like so hmm. they'll be looking to uh close the gap on them a wee bit because I think Waterford has started to open up a gap on them, haven't they? Mm, they've a good record against Waterford generally, but uh not it'll be Kyohan, one their new signs started the game, Burns came on at half time. And Junior actually finished the game and came on on the 90th minute. But you're talking about their Galway one win in five. Bowls have had one win in 10, JP, um, which is incredible. I, I was a little bit surprised by it, actually. Um, it doesn't feel like they've won win in 10, if that makes sense. But they have one win in 10 league games. And obviously, they're, look, there's a good chance in the next couple of weeks they'll overtake Pats with the games in hand on that. But you, you wouldn't bet that they're going to get too many points you know, out of those four games because the fact that, you know, it's very hard to see them pick up. If they do well to win two out of four, you know what I mean? That type of thing, like very well, I think, to win two out of four. Yeah. And obviously, they've brought in players as well. Ross Tierney came on as a sub in this game, for example, and um, he's a couple of weeks away, judging by the comments of Alan Reynolds from being like truly fit, you know what I mean? So, um, so that's notable that he came on, but... Um, I think they're lacking a bit of punch, aren't they? They, Every team needs a striker or such, but I think with Bowes, you know, they've got Akintunde there, Pishek. Akintunde works hard. He's not going to score many goals. Uh, Danny Grant's done okay in the last number of weeks, but in general, the likes of Grant, Connolly, um, if McDay plays, they're not really scoring enough goals. Their one bright spot is Dale Rooney, to be fair, because... You know, obviously a penalty taker, a good set piece taker, uh, creative. I think he's the second highest assist maker in the league this year as well. He's our one bright spark in the attacking areas at the moment, in my opinion. But um, as I said, one win in 10, it, it's it's not good for Bohemians either, is it? No, no, it's not. And that one came away back in May, away to Sligo. Um, a 3 0 one that night, too. Mm. Uh, and we know they had a couple of games in, in June called off for the, the international break. So, Look, it's not it's not good reading, but I think um the Bulls fans will be understanding of the situation Alan Reynolds found himself when when he came in, and I think they they picked up as I keep saying there was a week in April or May or some start of April where they picked up nine points in, in three games, and one of those ones was away to Shelburne, um, and you thought maybe Reynolds is on to something here, but. Um, I think he, he's won winning. He's had one win since then. Yeah. Uh, 
and well, one win since then and um, it'll be they'll look now to start going under the window and and seeing what they they, they can bring in and strengthen and they've got a big big cup game as well um, against Shamrock Rovers coming up so they, they, they'll be looking to land, uh, land a punch in that they they need to be careful. I know they do have those game in hand, those games in hand. But they'll need to be careful that they don't get sucked in the um a battle with Dundalk at the bottom or Andrahara. Um they they'll be looking to use them four games wisely, so they will. Yeah, at the showgrounds finish Sligo Rovers two, Derry City one. And first of all, I think Derry have had one win their last maybe eight attempts, maybe even more against Sligo Rovers. I think that's a stat I've seen um, recently enough. But it's one win in eight against Sligo anyway. It might be even one win in ten, but definitely one win in eight, I think. Ellis Chapman with two goals in this game. He's got six goals this season now, by the way. McMullen had given Derry City an early second half lead. A fantastic finish. Chapman... The penalty in 62 where Diallo fouls power. I don't think there's an issue there with the penalty. You'll get to you in a minute, JP. And then with the last minute winner, which was a great Maisie run, brilliant finish. Um, not so good defending from Derry. I, I think Connolly at the end was a strange decision to slide in. Maybe it's just panic. But Chapman finishes as well. It, it's a good goal from their point of view. Jarrah Wilson gets sent off in the last second as well. A uh, bit of a, a scuffle and altercation with Huben and... and um, you know, Sligo, two wins in a row now at the showgrounds against Derry City and Shamrock Rovers. Two great wins for them. Mallon actually started this game, by the way, as well. We wondered if he'd feature. But um, Sligo now are looking up. And I think now, um, you can. at one point I thought they could be dragged into it, particularly when they lost to Dundalk. But I think now um, you can look at Sligo Rovers and say, look, you know, they should be concentrating Europe, if anything, at this point. Yeah, it's it's a, a bad record for, for Derry. Like when you consider when Roy first came on, he'd, he'd picked up 10 points out of, out of 12 against them. And I think it's a very little since. Um, you, you would, I think, if you count up all the matches, he's probably picked up less than 10 in that. Um, look, Derry probably were a better team in the first half without scoring. Again, they've made a good save to deny Paul McMullen. McMullen's had a chance before that as well, ball right across the box. And he, um, I thought the defender got a touch on it, but the referee signalled for Sligo ball went without a play, which indicates that McMullen just missed it. Um, but the game, I think, needed a goal to open it up, and Derry had scored a really good goal. Great play down the right by Dan Kelly, puts in an excellent ball. Open can sort his feet out, and Paul McMullen with a really good curling effort in the top corner, and McGinty has absolutely no chance. That opened the game up a wee bit. You thought that an open game would, would suit Derry more, and for it was suiting Derry because Derry were, were, were bossing it a wee bit. But they just got caught really poorly down the right-hand side. First, Cameron Dummigan uh, just wafted a leg at the ball. And, um, Fitzgerald went past him, and then he went past Dan Kelly as well. He was riding in the cover um, too easily. And then... I just put my hands in my head when I seen it was it was up against the Diallo because I knew what was coming. Um, I think that's the third penalty this season he's given away. I excused him the last one um, against Bose. Uh, I know it's definitely two. I'm not sure about three. I, th I know somebody said it was three, but I know it's definitely two. I excused him the last one because it was a poor pass by the defender in them. This and was he a just, rush of blood to the head a little bit, wasn't it? And he just wasn't behind. He just wasn't aware. But this one was just, it was poor defending. Um, he needs to show him down the line. Uh, just don't dive in because I think once Fitzgerald sees that it's Diallo, he's probably half expecting the tackle. <sighs> Look, you mentioned there Stephen Mallon, you see he was bright, which we've always known he's a bright player. The problem with him is, is can he stay fit? Uh, if you keep him fit, then you've, you've got a really, really good player in your hands. Um, unfortunately, he's, he's been riddled with injuries his, his whole career and he, he he's still quite young and I hope for his sake, that that he is over them now, and he can get a run of matches and and show what he's really all about because he is a, a talented player. Um, I know Roy Higgins this year has taken a lot of stick for for not trying to win games. Um, but I think that's one thing you can't label Adam in this game. Um, he made subs even at one one. They they try and win the game, three men forward. 
even made a switch. He put um O'Reilly out the the right back and Dummigan and the and the midfield to try and give us a wee bit more and we got caught going forward trying to win it. Um, we we don't deal with the ball in the middle of the park and then else Chapman's we don't deal with the cleared ball. That's what it is and Chapman gets it down and runs at the defence and look, Conley he's expecting a shot and that's why he go he goes for the shot and and Chapman cuts back inside and. O'Reilly almost gets back and, and gets something on it, but a really good goal from, from mm -hmm. Chapman. But I think from the penalty onwards, I think you, you can't deny Sligo the one. Um, they, they were the better team. They put Derry under a lot of pressure, um, which Derry dealt with quite well, to be honest. Um, it was just when they, they went, I think Derry just sensed that they, they needed to win the game. They, had, they haven't won in a long time down there. Um, 2000. 2021 was the last time they won in Sligo and it was just they, they just sensed that they, they wanted to go and, and get the three points and get that monkey off their back and go into Europe on the back of a, a really good run of form um, and unfortunately they, they, they sold themselves short at the at the other end and look, I'm not going to have a, I'm not going to blame Conley for, for diving in because you, you, you see every there's defend, the best defenders in the world are Go for a block and the the striker cuts inside them and and scores and um look, look fair play to Sligo uh, they they deserve to win in the, the final half hour and I think Roy Higgins came out afterwards and said it was a terrible defeat and it is considering that with half an hour to go we found ourselves uh one 0 up and that didn't get anything out of the game yeah true and quickly just for Sligo before I end on this particular one it's strange because from Sligo. One minute you think they're having a really good season, next minute you think they're having a bad season, then they're having a really good season again. So, yeah. interesting to see yeah. how they go. You asked me last week if, if Sligo should be looking up rather than back. And last week I was kind of a wee bit hesitant. They say that they should be looking up because there was still that wee bit of a small gap they the bottom two. But I think they can definitely start looking up now. They're level with Galway, three points behind Shama Grovers. And Shamrock Rovers don't play again um, in the league in, until August. So I think Sligo will have at least one game or, or two games before Shamrock Rovers play again. So huge, a huge incentive, a huge opportunity for them. They they close the gap, they four spot, and they'll they be looking at the table now and they'll be thinking, well, why can't we go for this? And it may spark them in the, a wee bit of action in the transfer market. They may be saying um, one or two, maybe go and sign a, a goal scorer. Um, I know they've Chapman there and they've a couple of guys up front, but if they can get a really good number nine, that, that's going to bag them maybe five to ten goals between now and the end of the season. Um, if it's there, will they do it? Or are they happy with what they have? Who knows? But look, they, they can definitely start looking up. It was a really good six points they got at home. Um, I'm sure going into it, they probably would have been happy with, with three out of the six. You know, going under that double header, most they get teams six. would. <laughs> uh, they get six out of six is an incredible return, and look, full credit to them. Um, but they were tipped at the. I think we tipped them at the start of the season. They struggle. Um, I think I had them in the bottom two. I just wasn't sure about the signings that they'd made. But then, after I'd made that prediction, they ended up signing Ed McGinty and and Max Madden. I'm <laughs> Madden didn't really contribute that much to them but McGinty has contributed an awful awful lot and um he made a couple of big saves um on Friday night to say there to Paul McMullen one and then I think at one each I think McMullen tried the same kind of finish and McGinty read it and just caught it um so it, it just shows you that the quality it just shows you what your goalkeeper can bring you he can bring you maybe 10 15 extra points a season so he can no, it's huge, absolutely. At the RC, finished Waterford FC 1, St. Patrick's Leg nil. Ben McCormick against the former club on 52 minutes. And uh, I think we said in the show uh, preceding the game that this would be an, it was an entertaining game, JP. There wasn't as many goals as I thought there might be, but um, I kind of suggested a Waterford a more clinical and an attack. And mm. it kind of, it, it the game did show that Pats in the first half, I thought, were actually excellent to be honest they dominated the majority of the first half i think waterford's first shot and goals in 39 minutes uh in this game but um pat's good free-flowing football i thought they played some good stuff forrester was dominant in the middle of the park 
he had an outrageous shot uh, was left for from about 30 yards which hit the bar he was unlucky he had another chance where he probably felt he should have scored there was a chance for Jake Mulraney a uh, brilliant ball played through from a free kick from Brandon Kavanagh Mulraney had a chance there Melia had a chance Brandon Kavanagh had a chance um, they had opportunities and openings pass. So we got a lot of players forward. They're playing fluidly between the lines very quickly. And Waterford were struggling to deal with them. But the problem I felt with Pats at half time when you went in nil nil um, was the fact that they didn't take advantage. And there's no way you're dominating any team in this league like that, in my opinion, for the 90 minutes. And that's what happened in the second half. Waterford obviously got in at half time. Keith Long wouldn't have been impressed. He wouldn't have known they were fortunate to go in nil nil at half time. Um, Kenny probably would have said keep doing what you're doing but that's difficult when maybe the, the other side reset and they fix up a few things that they see that's wrong etc but Waterford came out much better in the second half Pats weren't as bad in the, weren't bad in the second half but obviously didn't dominate the second half and Ben McCormick's goal uh, on 52 minutes was obviously the winner it was a header I think Joey and Ann could do better with this to be honest with you JP he um you know, it's a good header and I know there's a bit of dew on the surface and he heads it down. I wouldn't call it a clanger, but my man will be a bit disappointed that he didn't keep it out, I think. And, and Waterford, you know, they attacked well at times in the second half. They had one or two opportunities. Last 10, 15 minutes, Pats tried to throw the kitchen sink at them, but found it difficult to create anything. Waterford defended very well. Rakowski, particularly um, at the back, was very good for them at centre back. Um I suppose Pat's best chance at the end was leave. He was running through and he did get his head up. I think there were two or three Pat's players on the left centre of the box and he failed to find any of them. So, And that kind of summed it up for me. I think the difference generally between both sides here is that you know Pat's haven't got the creativity or the guile in the final third for me. I don't think there's enough goals. Mulraney has two goals. Levy hasn't scored this season. Keating has four goals. That's not enough. Now, I know a lot of it was when they were playing a little bit more, let's say, conservative football on a daily, but there's been no excuse now in the last three games where I think they've played good football, but you can see there's problems in attack. That's something I think that needs to be fixed and probably looked at next season. But from Waterford's point of view, like they've got Parsons, who was dangerous. Um, you know, Asamoah didn't play in this game. He's still out, but he'll be back soon. Patterson, etc., and Armand. And all I could think was, if Pat say had those players in the first half, they'd probably go in 2 0 up, you know, that kind of way, and probably win the game. So, Waterford would be delighted because they dug it out. They were under the caution that first half. Um, I'm sure the Waterford fans would even agree with that watching, but they were under the caution the first half. And to dig it out and put themselves in a position third in the league, you know, as you mentioned, Galway dropping points, etc., etc. And it's a, it's a really good three points in the circumstance for Waterford because genuinely Pats, particularly the first half, they did play well in the game. Um, first of all, I don't agree with you when you say it's not a clanger. Um, you think it's a clanger, do you? It's a clanger because if that's Marcelo in goal and he concedes that goal, you're going to call it a clanger. Um, so, unfortunately, I know he's a new goalkeeper, um, but I think you have to call it what it is, Keith. It's a clanger. It's his near post. Yeah, it comes up off a of wet surface, but he's got to say that. He's played for West Ham in England. I know he hasn't played in the Premier League, but you don't be in a, a Premier League uh, on the, the books of a Premier League team if, if you're not a quality goalkeeper. Um, I think he needs to say that, Keith. I'm sorry, but that, that unfortunately, that's a clanger. Waterford won't care. They got the no. goal within the back of net. Um, they, they won the game 1-0. And they, they just keep looking up and I think they're a shoe on now for, for European football for next year. Um, whether they finish third, I don't know, but they'll definitely finish fourth. Because I think Galway now are starting to tail away a wee bit and um their their fixtures. Will Slag will put a, a consistent run together to be able to catch them. I don't think so. Um but who knows? As you say, it's a really good win on the circumstances we said about Shelburne point um being really good coming off the back of the defeat for Derry when you look at this it's a really good three points because of Galway losing and Shamrock Rovers not having a game as I said earlier they don't have a game now until they till August so Waterford will look they use whatever games they have between now and then to open up a, a bigger gap I know Rovers 
will have a game in hand or two because of fixtures that hadn't been played over the international break. So they'll still have an opportunity to, to, to close the gap on them. Some pats, look, if you're Stephen Kenny and your your team's playing really this well and you're, you're looking at the forward line, they're not really scoring any goals, then I, I think you have to use this window um, as an opportunity to get a goal scorer in. I'm sure Stephen, with all his contacts, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll know somebody that, that has a, a striker that, that could potentially maybe get him a goal. Yeah, that probably means one of the strikers he has on his books probably needing they 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 move on elsewhere. I don't but, think it's just a striker, JP. I just think it's the attack as a whole. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, but if if you're looking at the chances they created on on Friday or Thursday night, some of them were dropping the six yard box or in the penalty spot, and there was nobody there. They put it away. We we spoke about that as in Derry last year with Pat Hoban. Mm. They, they, yeah, there were good opportunities without getting shots and goal as well. Exactly. Yeah. This year, we're there. This year, them opportunities for Derry are ending up in the back of the net because we've got Pat Hoban on the end of them, or he's always in the round that area. Um. So look, Stephen will probably have enough confidence in his team that they they'll be able to stay away from the the bottom two. Um. Probably not a, much confidence in them to be able to. Catch a top four, um, and it's turning out to be a disappointing season for them, Keith. Because finishing third last year, very close to finishing second, we're well in the title race up to the last four or five games. Um, won the cup, and it's looking like now they're potentially going to finish below the likes of Galway and Waterford and possibly Sligo. Like, and you have to view it as a disappointing league campaign to be honest with you if that's the way it pans out I know there's a lot of games to go between now and then um, but if they were to maybe win the cup it would maybe solve it something there but um, as you yeah. say like, they're, they're, their first round tie is a really difficult tie for them um, but they went there last year and won on penalties and the, the cup really opened up for them after that so they'll be hoping for more of the same this year but you, you want to have a good They'll want to have a good finish to the set to the final quarter of the season, so um, they we'll see what happens. But for Waterford, it's just going from strength to strength. I think, and I think one thing um, Keith Long has done is he's brought four or five of his old Bulls team that he got into Europe two or three years in a row. He has them on board, mm. so he, he's using players that he knows that he trusts. Funnily and, enough, some of them are playing better now than they were for Bowes when Long wasn't there, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. it just shows you the, the confidence or that, that a, a manager gives to these players that they're happy enough they, they still play from at a, a different club and perform the even higher standards than when they were before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Keith Long is the top manager, in my opinion, in this league. If uh, Shamrock Rovers won, Dundalk nil at Tala Stadium. Johnny Kenny's goal on 29 minutes, and he enters the double figure brigade alongside Parry Gammond and, uh, and Patrick Huben on 10 goals now. Kenny's on um, 11 for Amund, 12 for Huben, by the way. But um, look, it's a big win for Rovers. The first time this season, actually, JP, they started. Uh, Dylan Moss, Jack Byrne, Aaron McAniff, and Gary O'Neill, incidentally. Now, they'll still have to be managed. For example, McAniff came off after 57, Byrne 64. But still, like you're looking for a bright spark if you're Shamrock Rovers, and that's definitely something bright. And the Kenny goal was a good goal all around. It's a brilliant ball played around the corner from Dylan Watts, actually. And Kenny's finish is, uh, is excellent. And they had opportunities. Darren Nugent performed well in the game as well. Um, and they'd be delighted with the win, but obviously a bit of nerves the last 10 15 minutes when Doc came into it, uh, caused a bit of panic, really, didn't they? Ryan O'Kane had a great chance, though, where um, I don't know, he just doesn't kick the ball, really, does he? He just kind of hits the outside of his foot, goes wide or something. But did opportunities there, Cameron Elliott, not an easy chance, but he did have an opportunity. Poles makes a save from an Elliott header, which was actually a very good header, to be fair. Uh, so the Doc ultimately look, they'll be disappointed enough with the defeat, but uh. Rovers will be just delighted just to get the win by hook or by crook in this game. And, uh, you know, I was kind of joking with someone saying that Shells and Derry drop points to suit with Rovers. But look, in all honesty, there's an awful long way back for Shamrock Rovers. But Bradley would be just very happy to get the win. And, um, you know, Bradley was asked, I think, at the end of the game, wasn't he? 
if he was under pressure and um he replied by saying you know if your son's basically on the treatment uh you know table every every few weeks in a hospital that's pressure and you know what i mean i'd say everything else in life is a doddle to stephen bradley to be honest with you with that kind of stuff going on yeah um because the the thing with with young josh and i i hope he's i hope he's still battling away and um best wishes to, to him and, and stephen um i think with with jamma grovers it's something stephen bradley could can do something about um with the son he probably feels helpless that he can't because he, he's not in that profession that you just have to sit back and, and let the, the the professionals um work away and and hopefully hopefully he comes out um the the comes out the, the right end of it um i know it, it's been gone now a couple of, a couple of years but it, they are this is it's something that just doesn't go away like that you really have to like battle it and um i really hope he does and he's a um, he must have an amazing character though an amazing um resolve stephen bradley <laughs> He he must do Keith. He must do because if we remember right back to when it was happening, um, before it even broke, he wasn't in the dugout at Dundalk, and there was speculation that he was maybe off to Lincoln or something like that. And then I think that it, there was a live RTE game, and then it, I think it maybe broke that Friday afternoon or something about Young Josh or. And I just remember after the game, Rovers had won, he'd done an interview and he mentioned it. Now, I can't remember if he mentioned it and let the whole, let us all know, or if it was really leaked that day and somebody had asked him about it. I just can't remember, but it's been going on. But as you say, a lot of resolve to be, especially for last year, Keith, they, they have it because he was going in and trying to manage a team for four in a row and he got a team together to do it. They got off to a bad start. And he could so easily have turned around and said, no, you know what, I have to focus on my family. But he didn't. He stayed with Rovers, got them their four in a row. She, like, you have to take your hat off them for being able to manage the biggest club in Ireland um, and pick that personal, have that personal battle as well to, to deal with at home. And, and not only that, he's got our kids at home as, as well that, that, that need support in, in different ways. And... um. I really do take my hat off to, to Stephen Bradley for, for continuing to, to do what he's doing under those circumstances. And look, the the win for Sean McGrovers is it's their first point it's their first win over Dundalk this season. They've lost one, drew one before that. And really good finish by Johnny Kenny. It's not easy finish either because no. he's got the defender right tight to him. And um he managed he has he always got the aim for the far post and he, he found he got everything right and a massive three points for Sean McGrovers. Look, and they'll find look, they're only 10 points playing Derry and they're 13 playing Shelburne. Anything and Derry and Shelburne play one and another next in the league. So, again, that that's potentially one of them, at least one of them dropping points. Um, so Rovers will probably not give up the fight just yet. Um, and Stephen Bradley will be drilling it into his players that don't give you don't give up until the very end. And, um, yeah, look, his resolve, his, his character, as you say, must be really, really solid um, for him to be able to have these two challenges side by side and just keep going. Mm. Yeah, as for Dundalk, um, they'd be disappointed maybe they didn't get a late equaliser there at the end, as I said, but uh, look, I suppose even though Rovers haven't been doing great, they still would have looked at Getting out to him this game is maybe a bit of a bonus, I think, in reality, wouldn't they? Yeah, well, they, they would have done honest. like they're the lowest scorers in the league, I think. Mm. Galway, even Galway scored more than them. Um, Bundaka scored 13, but they haven't conceded a lot, and that and that's they do with um, um home that's, form. that's to do with the, the home form, but um, they've only 13 goals in 23 games, which is really really poor. Um, so they'll they'll need to start scoring goals. Um, if they're they're going to get out of trouble, they've done well to get themselves in this position. Considering where they were when O'Donnell left, they were they were dead men walking basically. Um, they they were walking towards the free falling towards the first division. Um, Burns and Gertland steadied the ship, 
King came on for a couple of weeks. Daly's come in now and, and got the got the motor in again, but they, they, they really need to start scoring goals, Sam, because we, we know Drahada do you have a bit of firepower and events if Drahada can can get clicking again. Um they they, they could leave Dundalk in their wake, but um like I said, they're Dundalk as said earlier, Dundalk played Drahada next. Um in the league, so that that's a big game. Um, I think Dundalk when Dundalk went to Drogheda in May, Dundalk had the chance to beat Drogheda and go above them, and Drogheda won it later on. Yeah, they it's, went five clear with that win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the tide has turned now. Mm. Um, Drogheda are going there, knowing that I won the same above Dundalk, so it's it's all to play for. And but Dun, say Dundalk thirteen goals. They're gonna to have to at least double that between now and the end of the season if they if they want to stay up. Mm, yeah, it could be a case of we'll get into it in the prediction show, really, actually. But it could be a case of, uh, you know, if they can score more goals, of Drotta can uh, batten in the hatches at the back. But guys, we'll leave it there. Let us know what you think in the comments. Give us um, your thoughts as usual. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching as usual. Thank you, JP. Cheers, Keith.